Hello everyone and welcome. This is Kevin with Online Trader Central. We are welcoming you to today's presentation, which will be starting promptly in just three minutes. Melissa Armo is your host and presenter here today. We'll be starting promptly in three minutes. Again, thank you everyone and welcome. Hello everyone and welcome. This is Kevin with Online Trader Central. And you know at the sound of the trumpets that means it's time to begin. It's exactly 4.30 in the Boston area here or wherever you may be around the world. It's time to begin. <coughs> Put your hands together and welcome from the stockswitch.com. Thank you Kevin and Kathy and thank you everyone at Online Trader Central. Welcome. Welcome here on this wonderful fall Monday to a lecture that I'm giving. My name is Melissa Armo and I own a company called The Stocks Wish LLC. And today I'm going to talk about making a living day trading using just one strategy. We're going to talk about the strategy that I trade. I'm a day trader. And so welcome. If you have any questions, you can go to my website. It's www.thestockswish.com. You can also email me at melissa at thestockswish.com as well if you'd like more information. And feel free to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Pinterest, or Skype. And I have a ton of videos on YouTube, actually. I've been calling the market uh, pretty much regularly for the last year. And you can follow and check out any of the plays of the days I have on there as well. So today we're going to talk about making a living trading. Before I start out, I, I just put this in today. I was watching Wall Street. It was on TV this afternoon. And this is a great quote. And I thought, gosh, you know, this really, really kind of describes what I like to do in the market. This is from Gordon Gecko. And he said at one point, the public is out there throwing darts at a board sport. I don't throw darts at a board. I bet on sure things. This is from the movie Wall Street. I don't throw darts at a board when I trade. In fact, I don't do trades that I think are 50-50 chance of working or failing. I talk about conviction a lot when I trade. And when I take a trade, I believe with 100% conviction that it's going to work. Now, does every trade that I take work? No, of course not. Uh, but a lot of trades that I take work. And so it really made me think about my whole philosophy about trading, which is the fact that if you want to do this for a living, if you're really serious about making money consistently trading, then you can't have the philosophy out there where you're throwing darts at a board, specifically if you're risking an advanced amount of money. And we're going to talk about the different trading levels and the different risk levels today as well. The fact is there are a lot of people in the market. There are a lot of people in the market. Some are making money, some are losing money, some are break even. That's why there's a lot of money in the market, actually. 
Uh, we know that there's a lot of people in the market because there's a lot of money in the market. You see it flowing through the market constantly every day. It's on TV. It's on the Internet. Everybody talks about the stock market. Uh, whether people are in it through their 401k or through someone else investing the money or if you're a day trader or a swing trader or some other kind of trader where you actively have an account, a lot of people, most people are in the market. So we are here to talk about day trading for a living. And a lot of people, I get this question all the time, and people ask themselves this, I'm sure, when they think about trading for a living, is it possible? Is it possible to make a living day trading? The fact is that there's a current belief system that exists right now today, which is that it is not possible, okay? So it's a huge belief system, okay? It permeates everything that anybody ever talks about in any webinar you go to, free or paid for, classes, everything. All these educators are out there. And the belief system that they're talking about which they're constantly, constantly reinforcing when they teach classes and webinars, is that it is very hard, impossible, not really possible uh, to make money in the market for a living. So you have to take a step back and look at this from an intellectual standpoint and know, okay, that it's a huge belief system. Are all belief systems true? No. What makes a belief system true or false? It's what you actually believe, okay? That's what makes the difference. So I want you to take 60 minutes, okay, the next time we have left here, and imagine the possibility that success is your reality instead of the opposite. Instead of imagining that it is not possible, I want you to imagine for the time we have together here today that, in fact, the opposite is possible and that your belief system for the next hour is that it is possible to make money for a living, trading. This is a picture of me. I just took this. This is a selfie, a little selfie of me here, so you can see what I look like. This is a real picture of me. Uh, I just took it myself on my phone. The defining factor for me um, is what? Really, when I was figuring all this stuff out and I was trading and I was losing at the beginning, I never, 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 never didn't believe that I was successful. Now, I was losing money at the beginning when I started trading, when I started figuring out all the stuff I'm going to talk about today and that I train myself and use and teach. But the defining factor for me is that I never bought into that belief system. I just never bought into it. I just never, just didn't pay it any mind. I mean, I didn't even care. I mean, everything that I went to, I was listening to the same stuff as everybody here. Because I'm young. I've only been doing this for, been training for six years. Online Trader Central was around back then. I used to come and listen to all their free lectures too. And uh, the market was a different place about six years ago. Trading, the trading environment was a different place about six years ago. But still, tons of people were there, and I was listening just like you today. And I was listening to all the things that people would say. Now I'm teaching, okay, and now I'm successful as a trader. And when I think back, when I try to give helpful advice to people and mentor people that are coming to me that want to be successful, uh, the Tavani factor for me is that it was myself. It was actually just myself. Here, look at me. I'm a regular person. And I believed in myself, and I believed that I could do it. I didn't have any guarantees. Uh, there was no one looked at me and said, you're absolutely going to make it. I think at some point people did look at me and say, you're going to make it. But, I mean, at the beginning and for a long, long time, you know, everyone was saying, because this is the big quote-unquote belief system out there in reference to traders, that it's impossible to do, it's just too hard, you're never going to make a living doing this. And I did have another job. The whole time that I was trading and losing at the beginning, and I didn't quit that job until I actually started making money trading. But my goal was always to J trade for a living because I wanted to quit my mortgage job. I did mortgages and it was around 2008 that I started trading. I started realizing that this was something that I wanted to embark on and do. And I knew that my, you know, I didn't, didn't want to do mortgages for the next 10, 20 years. And I knew I wasn't going to make the same amount of money doing them. And I was very successful as a mortgage person, and I just decided that I wanted to change careers. So for me, the reason to do this was always to change careers. And I never bought into the belief system that it was impossible. And even if someone told me that, which my friends, some of my friends actually said, this is an impossible thing that you're trying to do. And this is, I mean, this is months after me into doing it losing. And I still didn't listen to anyone says. So I have to tell you that the defining factor in whether or not you're going to make it is really you. It's really you. Now, when we're, when we're done here going over some things at the end, I'm going to talk about some other pieces that you need. But this is the one thing, 
okay, that defines someone like me who can trade well or someone that isn't doing it, okay? So you're going to have to accept the fact that that belief system that is really, really out there is something you're going to have to ignore. Now, once you accept that and you decide that you want to be successful, how are you going to get there? How are you going to get to the point where you can do it? How are you going to get to the point where you can actually do this for a living? You need a plan. You need a plan of action. You have to kind of say to yourself, where do I want to be in a year? Do I want to be at the same place in a year? Do I want to be making this much money in a year? Do I want to be quitting my job in a year? Okay, what is it? And you also have to look and say, where do I want to be in five years? This sounds like a fall long time away. And I don't care if you're 25 or 35 or 45 or 55. You know, we all have to kind of plan for the future. And I say it's never too soon to do that. Even if you're in your late 20s or early 30s, it's a good idea to plan for the future. For those of you that live in the U.S., we don't even know if our retirements are going to look like what we thought they were going to look like, you know, 25, 30 years ago. So it is just never, never too late or never too soon to plan for your future, for where you want to be. And do you know what the bigger picture is for what you want financially? Meaning, let's just say you're at a job right now and you're not making the amount of money that you would like to be making. Maybe the bigger picture is you actually would like to be wealthy in the market. This was something that I had in the back of my head too. Now, I did very well doing mortgages, that's true, but I never made enough. <laughs> I always wanted to make more. Every year, I would want to make more and more and more and more and more. And then that's the one good thing about the market. And it's the one great thing about the market. I say, you know, you go out there, you trade well, and you're doing it. The sky's the limit because every year you should be making more. And it should have nothing to do with the environment of the market. And we're going to talk about that today as well. So it is about having one focus, one focus and one strategy. This is a picture of the QQQs. And what we're going to talk about today is my strategy, which is gaps. Now I have a system to figure out gaps. The market has been trading down, okay? The market's been trading down for like the last, well, I'd say the whole first week of October it was trading straight on down and it was actually gapping. The QQQs gap down here and here. We were flat here. But we gapped down here. The Qs had a lot of gap downs about this first, second week of October. Now the market's rallying and it's trying to recover, and it is going to recover. But if you were trading gaps, you could have traded the QQQs or the SPY ETFs or any ETF actually or stock using my method by reading the gap. Now the market doesn't gap every day. It gaps a lot more often than stocks. On a day the market wouldn't gap, maybe you wouldn't do anything if you traded the ETFs of the market only. I like to trade stocks, which we're going to talk about today, but I want to point out that you can apply a gap method of trading to the ETFs of the market, and some people like to do this for options trading. I'm not doing options, but it's expensive to trade the QQQs. Strike price is anywhere between you know, $90 and $100 in the last few months. So this is a, a doing options, it would be a different way of risk basing yourself for profitability if you wanted to think about doing that. Now, let's get back to this idea of focus, okay? Now, remember, this is you, your belief system now for the next hour is that you can make a living day trading. What is one of the things you're going to have to be very, very focused on? The one thing that you're doing every day. Because if you're paying yourself, and you have to pay yourself, and if you don't pay yourself, you can't eat, okay? then you have to be very focused. It takes away this whole gambling methodology and you're focused on what you're doing. I drew these circles here. We have a top row and we have a bottom row. On the bottom row, every circle is red. And this is how I would describe real focus in a trader. Someone that gets up every day and the circle is red for them. They basically draw their circle every day. And Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they get up every morning they draw a red circle. Now the results, okay, of this red circle will vary whether they made a small amount of money, a medium, a lot, or maybe they took a loss of the day. But every day, someone could get up and someone could learn from this trader. Actually, this is one of the reasons why people are learning how to trade successfully from me. Someone can learn from this trader and someone can duplicate this methodology uh, for success because this person does the same thing every day or is looking for the same thing every day. Now you have to know what kind of circle this person is looking for. This is what you would learn from me. But it's the same circle really every day that you're looking for. And once you learn how to look for that circle, you just go and you just do it. And you just do it like a machine. And you just do it. And you just do it every day. 
so you can map out here your progress of the focus. Now this is most people up here in the top level. Most people will get up one day and they'll decide to go long. Most people will get up one day and they'll decide to go short. They'll get up one day, they'll see the market, they'll want to do a buy set up in the daily chart or a sell set up in the daily chart or a breakout play or a climactic. Every day they're doing a different direction, long or short. Sometimes they're doing more than one thing in the day. They're also doing different strategies every day. Again, not only every day, but sometimes multiple strategies on each day. And so if you were following this trader or watching this trader, you would get up every morning. You, don't, you couldn't even predict with certainty the color of the next day's circle. There would be many, many colors, every color in the spectrum. And then also you don't know how those circles would line up. So do you see this person isn't very focused? Does this person have a high percentage of making a living trading not as high as this one? Okay, Because this person is all over the place. And the results will look like that too. There's no way that they can't because they don't have one thing that they're focusing on. So it's better to focus on one thing. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't do more than one thing occasionally, sometimes. What if you get up on a day and you don't see your strategy? You might want to do something else. But if you were really focused, you wouldn't. Okay, like I don't. I only do one strategy. But I don't even have a problem with that. The problem, I think, for many people is they're up here. And they're just trying to find opportunity in the market every day. But the fact is that it doesn't exist like that. It doesn't work like that for a level of consistency to pay yourself on a regular basis. And what ends up happening is you fall back. Even if you get to that place where you have the belief system that you're successful and you can do it, you have one bad day in here. And then you fall back and you're like a lot of people. And then that belief system that it's not possible creeps up into your thought processes, into your brain, and then you totally get off track. It's very, very easy to do what most people are doing. It is harder to do this for most people. It's not hard for me because I live in my own world. I trade by myself. I do what I want. I don't listen to anyone else. I ignore other people. I taught myself how to do this so I believe in it and I run my own trading room. And I'm the only person that talks in it. If you were by yourself though, in your own office, and you're with me in my trading room, it would not be hard for you to do this because I keep everybody focused. The problem is that a lot of trading rooms out here are doing a lot of different stuff and it's very hard to be focused. And if you do every single trade the moderator does on that day, you probably aren't having good results. Okay, So it really is about the focus. And I think this is an extremely important part that will help define you as a good trader or a so-so trader or a losing trader, actually. So having one focus helps. It helps you to bank money daily and you're going to need to do this if you're going to rely on this for income. Also, having one focus trading stops it from being a computer game. This is something that a lot of people combat, even still people that I know in my trading room. They just don't understand that this is serious, and people have to understand it's serious, and it's not a computer game, okay? It's easy to press the button to take a trade, and it's easy to get out sometimes too, too soon. You have to realize that it's not a computer game, and you have to be serious about the exact entry you're taking and the exact place you're taking it out. Having one focus helps you stop. Also, when you're up, you will be watching the time of the day. You will be watching the reversal times. You'll be watching for the targets if you have one focus. And the focus is the target for the stock that you're trading. And it helps you stop when you're up because you've met your goal for the day. It's not about continually going after something all day. You are just trying to meet your goal, and that's it. It's like if somebody gave you a project at the office, and they said, listen, as soon as you're done with this project, you can go home for the day. Well, if you finish that project in an hour, you can go home for the day. It's the same thing with trading. Your job is to make a certain amount of money, and once you do, then you stop for the day. Just like if your boss, if you worked at an office, gave you a project. He doesn't have any more work to do for you in the day. He's going to pay you for eight hours. So finish it as quickly as you can. Do a good job, but get it done as quickly and expeditiously as you can. Also, having one focus helps you do it like a job. Because if you keep wanting to trade all day, even if the first trade that you take is a good one and you're up, then it kind of takes away from this looking at like a job. You have one job as a trader is to make money. That's your job. You have one job. You have one job to get up every day and make money. And once you do that, make your goal, you're done. And it's really just looking at it like that. I only trade it in the morning. Occasionally, I'll trade in the afternoon, but not that often. This time of the year actually is a time that I might because it's earning season and there's a lot of stocks that are going to bigger targets in earning season. But for the most part, I like to trade in the morning be done. I find that is my best, most successful time of the day. And it helps you to look at this like a job. 
You know, even if you have to like get dressed before you sit at your desk, don't sit there in your pajamas. If that helps you actually take it more seriously, then that's what you need to do. So in order to make a living trading, you need the right business plan. For me, it's my system. It's just, my system is actually a business plan, a trading plan, my strategy, my focus, everything. It's all encompassed. It's the reason I created it this way. It's called the Golden Gap System, and it is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. And by gap, I mean stock or an ETF. I like to do stocks. The reason is because more people have more emotional attachment to companies than they do to ETFs. And stocks, therefore, then will have more momentum and bigger plays in them. And that's a fact. So I know people like the ETFs, the, you know, the precious metals and the markets. You can use them for that. But I find you get more play in companies. The philosophy behind the 26 points is to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Actually, one of the ones today was NCR. You can go look at that. I don't have it in the class. Huge directional bias for the entire day in that stock to the downside. Big move on the day. Again, that stock was another example of that today as well. Early confirmation of my bias in the move, which means an early entry in the trade between 9.30 and 10. Precise entries with follow through and a good risk reward. And we're going to talk about what that means too. Now, I use a 26-point checklist to trade. This is my reason for the focus. So I find a stock, I rate it, I go through the checklist. It tells me I'm going to watch it. It's my top pick, or I have two picks usually each day, and I will watch to trade one or them both. Some days you get three, four, some days you get as many as you can handle. I don't like to do more than two things at a time, but this is a personal choice. So that is my focus then. And I have it right next to me, like on my desk, on a piece of paper just like this picture here. And this tells me what I should be doing. So I don't have to look all over. This is like the red circle. This is the red circle every day. It's just there in a piece of paper. Now, why trade gaps? Because of large institutional money. This is why they work so well. This is why they pay well too. Because they're created with large institutional money. And by the way, this is the reason that the market is higher. The sell-off that's happened in the market in the last two weeks is not institutional sell-off. The market is going to get bought, it is starting to get bought, and the market is going to make a new high, and it's probably going to happen in the next 30 days, it could even happen in the next 10 days before the end of the month, because the market will get bought with institutional money. And I know how to read that extremely well, and the reason that I know how to read institutional positioning and stocks in the market is because I know how to read gaps. I think that is one of the best things that you could possibly learn from me. If you took my class, and if you train with me in the live room, the best thing that you could ever learn from me is this, because this is a powerful, powerful thing. And it will lend you in the right direction when you start to train, knowing whether something is a long or short. Okay? Because institutional money moves stocks. It's what makes gaps. And the professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. And then you need a way that you've got to know how to play it. Okay? Because some things are shorts and some things are long. And in order to make money, you have to be in the stock in the right direction. So I have a formula that I use to rate and qualify the gap. I get confirmation and conviction, therefore then, with the formula, that the large institutional money is on the side of the gap. And then you play it. Gaps are an event, and they create a sense of urgency, which is, again, why I like companies. And thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power, which is what? Which is institutional money. And as I was saying, this is one of the best things I think you could learn from me. So the philosophy behind the Golden Gap system is what? To analyze a large time frame, to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap on the day, because I'm day trading, okay? And all large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders. And one of the other great things about the system is to make entry decisions and exit decisions based on a small time frame, which is the one minute chart. This is a high degree of focus and accuracy. Talk about honing in on a focus. Okay, the, you can't trade a smaller chart than one minute chart for time frame unless you're on a tick chart. And you actually can't get enough information on a tick chart. And trust me, I've looked at it. If there was a way that I could be more accurate on a tick chart, I would. There actually isn't. It actually goes the opposite direction then. Okay. So the highest level of accuracy with the most precision and detail is actually in that one-minute chart for intraday, not a tick chart. 
that it has the opposite effect then if you start to go to the ticks. Using the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick allows for accuracy in the direction, and then using the one minute chart allows for good risk reward trades with accuracy. So now let's talk about risk to reward. A lot of people say, well, how much money can we make doing this with risk to reward? What, let's talk about what I consider a good risk to reward trade and a bad risk to reward trade. A lot of people are scalpers at day trade. They find this is the only way they can get by. Okay, I know it. I, you know, I know it. I've been there. What is a scalper? Well, for example, most scalpers, they just don't have good risk to reward trades. What do they do? Most scalp traders have to take multiple trades to equal one risk unit. Okay, that means if they risk a dollar, they are trying to make a dollar. But most scalp traders have to risk a dollar and then they make like 25 cents or 50 cents. Gap trading is more profitable than scalping. I'm not a scalper, but I understand that a lot of day traders are scalpers because I feel like it's the only way they can make it, or rebate traders too. But gap trading involves quick moves, like a scalp. Okay, so it's that intensity that you get like in a scalp of the move. But gap trading has a better risk to reward than scalps. They're still fast trades though, but you're getting more momentum and a better risk to reward. So a good risk to reward trade is risking $1 and making $1 at a minimum. And a good risk to reward trade also has the potential to make $3 or more at the target. So in other words, if I take a trade and I am risk a dollar and I make a dollar, I'm up a dollar in the trade, I don't kill it, I have a target. But the target is always more than one. Okay, I'm not taking a trade where the target's one. A bad risk to reward trade is one where you risk one lot and you only make half or less than half of the one risk unit. It's like not worth my time if I see that. I won't do a trade like that. And this is what a lot of scalpers do. They do it anyways. But trades that make less than one risk unit do not result in profitability over the long haul. Also, you have to take a lot to make up the difference. So the key is a system where you can make mostly profitable good risk reward trades and also less trades. The idea of taking less trades with more profitability is a better idea for, for anyone, whether you're doing this for a living or even part-time, than taking a lot of trades for a little bit because as soon as you're in the trade as a scalper and it goes against you a little bit, you want to take it out. And then if it goes on to work, you miss the whole move. And the trade may not have been doing anything wrong, but you're just in that scout mode. And you got to get out of that and learn what to have conviction in that's actually going to move and continue with the momentum. Because sometimes things back up on you. That's how it is. Market's a good example of that. Right now, market's falling down. Nothing goes in a straight line up or down forever. This is part of understanding trading. And it's whether you're on a one-minute chart or a daily chart. Same philosophy. Same type of movement in things. Okay. Now, there's three trading levels. Tier 1 is a beginner. That's you if you just do the class. Even if you have a lot of money, it has nothing to do with that. You just did the class, you're brand, brand new. Tier two is intermediate. This is where you've done well at the beginning level. You are in this in-between stage. You're starting to do pretty well. And you feel like you can step it up a notch. Step three, or tier three, is advanced. This is when you know, you've made it. You can risk a good amount of money. You are making money consistently over at least a six, nine month period or more. And you know, you're at the point where you could actually pay yourself for a living, whether you want to quit your day job or not is up to you. So know where you're at at any point in time and be willing to adjust yourself accordingly along the way. What does this mean? If you start at a beginner, jump to an intermediate, but then start having trouble with yourself, it, you might have to go back to a beginner level. It doesn't mean you won't progress. It means that you have to take a step back and figure it out if you're not doing something right. Like if you're back in that scout mode again or something and you're not getting the most bang for your buck in your trades. We're going to look at one trade here today. It's just one trade. But we're going to look at all the different levels of this trade, particularly. There's a trade in Juniper. This is Friday. And Juniper is a great gap. And in fact, when I was in the room in the morning, I say some, the best things that I say actually are in the trading room, which is just me as raw as I could be reading the pre-market. And I read the market in the morning and I read my stock picks, one of my gaps after I read everything. And, you know, there was, I said there wasn't, there's not any reason to do anything else today. With Juniper. Now, Juniper ended up going to the target. Does every stock go to the target every day? No. Actually, Juniper went to the first target and the second target, and this was a really nice play. Juniper gapped down. Okay, this is the night before up here on Thursday night. It had closed up here at 21 something and opened down here around 2010 ish or whatever it opened. Okay. So the stock gapped down overnight. It gapped down a dollar or so. Okay. So Juniper was a short. I rated it according to my system, and you were looking for a setup trade in Juniper. You would take an entry short in Juniper. This is a one-minute chart down here. This is a volume bars. Over here is the price. You would enter on this one-minute in here short. 
and you would put a stop over here, and you would be in the trade. Now the first exit was in here, and the second exit was down here into the target. Actually, this went to 19, but uh, the second exit was like 19.15 into lunch. So if you are a beginner trader and you did Juniper and you had a, a small account, okay, this is not a large account, you are risking uh, 60 bucks on this trade. This is you, you're brand, brand new. You take the trade, the same trade as, as I would or anyone, whether they're intermediate or advanced, but you're a beginner. You short 600 shares of this, your risk is $60. I use a hard stop. There's a hard stop there. If the trade stops out, it goes over the stop, you're losing 60 bucks. That's it. First exit, though, it did hit 1950. You get out of half. Second one, 1915, get out of half. It did go down to 19, though. Profit then on exiting in portions was 381. So the risk to reward on this trade by getting out of halvesies and halvesies is 381. If you took the whole trade, you got almost a dollar out of it. If you held the whole thing down to the low, uh, to the target, which it went, you could have made 600 bucks. But let's say you're conservative, okay? You don't know what the market's doing in the day. You get out of the first exit, the second exit, and you make $381. This is still a 6.35 R trade. That's a really good trade. This is a great trade, okay? So that's really the right way to take a position in something and maximize it for what would be your income. You don't want the whole thing to go against you if it comes on down in here. You don't know for sure if it's going to get to the target or not. So you're doing the conservative approach, getting it at the first target, which drops on down, and getting out the rest down into the drop. Okay? But it all stems from what? It all stems from Juniper itself, which is a gap trade. Now, let's look at intermediate. If you could risk a little bit more, 150. And I say 150 is an intermediate risk. Okay? could be between $100, $150, $200, could be intermediate. Same exact trade, shorted it on the one minute chart, 1996, exited the half, the first drop, second drop. This trader, risking $150, made almost $1,000. This is a great trade. This trader did not hold the whole position down to the target, did not even exit the second exit at the target, which was 19, which it did get to. Again, a nice trade. This trader made $952. This trader is not risking some crazy amount of money here. Okay, $150 as an intermediate. Will this trader make $1,000 or so every day risking $150? No, no, it won't. But he will some days because he will get the gap right. He will have conviction in it. He will take the correct entry. He will position size himself correctly. And he will have conviction to hold at least half of it down to a bigger number. And the trade's already going. He's up in the trade, okay? and he knows what he's doing, and he's a good trader. He will get trades like this. He will get trades like this a couple times a month. And do you see how you can start to put together this idea of believing that it is possible to day trade for a living, to turn that belief system around? There is nothing like money to turn that kind of belief system around. There's nothing like profits. Uh, there's nothing like what I call common trades, where you have a trade and you make over $1,000 in the trade and it's, and it's a trade you're not in like that long. I call those common trades, whether it's $1,000, $2,000, $3,000. Every trader that day trades needs to have trades like that. It helps you get conviction and confidence that it's something you can do for a living. Because even if you have one bad day as a day trader, if you are used to having common days or have common days, you can see how you, know, you can pay for the loss and the bad day and all your expenses to trade, commissions, room fees, everything else, and still pay yourself. So you need to have those days like that. And it is possible to have days like that, even with an intermediate risk. But you have to know what you're doing, and you have to be good. And this is what I'm teaching people to do. But Juniper was one of those ones. You could have made almost $1,000, and you didn't even have to risk a lot of money. And you didn't even have to hold the whole thing into the target. Okay? And feel free to ask me questions as we're going along in here. I know I'm talking, 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 but if you have questions, just pop them in the room. Now, let's just say if you're an advanced trader. You're an advanced trader. You are doing this for a long time, you have the type of account where you could take a sizable position in a trade. You take 6,000 shares of Juniper, you risk 10 cents, you get the same exact trade as the beginner and the intermediate, same entry, same exit, out of half, and out of half in the second drop. You could make $3,800 in a trade like this where you didn't even hold the whole thing to the target. Now you had to risk $600. This is an advanced risk for two reasons. One, 
to take anything where you're up over four or five thousand shares is really what I call advanced, particularly at this price point. And you have to have about 120 some thousand in buying power as well to do something like this. So you really have to have an account that can withstand this risk as well. Because if this trade would fail, you have to be okay with losing $600 in the day. Now it did not fail though. It ended up going on to work. And this is a really, really nice trade that you didn't even hold the whole thing down to the target. If you had taken the whole position at 96 and held it down to 19, if you had that much conviction and could stomach the wiggles and jiggles on through until you got to the number, and you were in it all day. It actually didn't drop to like quarter to four in the afternoon to this number. But you could have made almost $6,000 in it, risking 600 bucks if you had enough conviction to hold it through all day. I don't like to trade all day, but you could have done it on Juniper. I mean, you could have been in this stock all day and made almost six grand. You had to risk $600 to do it, though. Moved almost a dollar. So again, it is not whether or not you are beginner, intermediate, or advanced as far as what you're doing. It's the difference of the money that you're making, which makes a difference for you to be able to pay yourself for a living. How do you get to the point where you can take a 6,000 share position? How do you get to the point where you can risk $600 in a trade? You know, you've got to know what you're doing, having the focus, knowing that you yourself would follow that circle, the red circle routine every day. Now, a lot of people ask me how many gaps you get per week. During each quarterly earnings season, you get three to five quality gaps or more. This is each day. Now, during non-earning season, you'll usually get three to five quality gaps per week. I'm usually looking for one a day in non-earning season. But in earning season, you get a couple every day. Sometimes you get a lot. Whether or not you play them all or not is up to you. You can play as many as you want, as many as rate for the system. A quality gap is one, though, that rates high enough to train based on the 26-point rating system. If there are multiple highly rated gaps, then you can take more than one trader gap pick per day. Each trade is on its own and should be managed accordingly, meaning if you decide to take a trade and you are in that trade, then you're in that trade and you want to take a second trade and a third trade, each trade is on its own. You're not taking one trade and then killing that because of another one or so on and so forth. Each trade has to be looked at it on its own. Is it working? Is it holding the stop? Is it doing anything wrong? Is it not doing anything wrong? What's the target? What's the risk to reward? Okay, so you would have to be in a position where you could take if you're an intermediate trader, if you wanted to take three trades, you'd have to be able to risk $450 at one time in that time period, okay? Because they're all setting up within the first half an hour of the day. And if you can do that according to the size of your account, you can do it. But you have to be able to do that because each trade has to be on its own accordingly, okay? Now, a lot of people ask me this question too here about leverage. Leverage is really margin. I call it leverage. It's really margin or buying power that you get from the broker. What is leverage? Leverage is the use of a small initial investment credit or barred funds to gain a very high return in relationship to one's investment or to control a much larger investment or to reduce one's own liability for any loss. So how do you use leverage in your trading account to your advantage? That's what's going to enable you to actually day trade for a living is the leverage and the margin you're going to get from a broker. Whatever broker you choose, whatever broker you use, they're all going to give you leverage. The leverage is different. You have to talk to them and find out the size of the accounts. But that is how you're going to be able to day trade for a living. Otherwise, everyone would need the cost cash equivalent of any trade that they would take. Now, how are you going to protect yourself from losses? Stops. You're going to put in hard stops with limit order. And you're really going to just use something that's called money management. You use stops to determine your entry and risk amount. And you have a certain amount that you're risking for the day as well that you're stopping out. Meaning, if you are down a certain amount, let's say you took those three trades all at once, and you risked 150 on three at once, and none of them worked, which would be unusual, but let's just say it happened. You'd be down 450 then, okay, on the day. If that's your cutoff, you would have to stop for the day. And that's part of money management. Money management also means stopping when you're up. Like, if you take a good trade like Juniper, that's it, you're done. You don't do anything else. There's no need to do anything else. Whether you were a beginner, intermediate, or advanced trainer, if you did the Juniper trades, if you got out of the whole thing in the first exit, or if you had it out, there was no reason to do anything else. You made your goal for the day. Okay, your goal for the day was three. And as soon as you're up to three, you're done. That's it. Now, leverage helps you make money if you know how to trade. That's the good thing about it. And equity leverage is actually fine. I know there's lots of leverage out there for Forex and things, and some of it is crazy, and some of it is actually dangerous for the Forex leverage. But the equity leverage that most brokers give you is what I would consider quote-unquote normal if there is such a thing. 
And leverage is actually a good thing if you know how to trade. All intelligent traders use leverage and use it to their advantage. Leverage gives you buying power to take a position without needing the full cash value or cost of stock outright to purchase it. A lot of people don't understand this about day trading, but it is something important and you need to know it. Because if you think you need to have $250,000 to day trade, you actually don't. Okay. Now let's go for this example here with Juniper. To short 6,000 shares of Juniper, instead of needing, it would have been 119,760 in real cash, is what you would have needed to take the position at 1996 per share. The advanced trader only needs the leverage equivalent of the position and buying power or margin. For a retail account, this would equate to $29,940. That's what you would have needed to take a 6,000 share in position of Juniper on Friday. For the beginner intermediate trader with only 600 to 1,500 shares, the first two examples would be less than that. But I'm just showing, this is how leverage helps you. So if you have this much money, you can take a trade and make $3,800 in Juniper. Otherwise, you would need this without the broker. So we need brokers in order to give us margin and leverage. That's why you got to have a good broker to trade with. And do you see how this is a nice amount of money? to be able to actually make $3,800 on thirty grand, that's a 10% return on the day. And that's a 10% return in one trade in one, in one day. That's really, really good. You're not going to earn something like that as a scalper. And if this, you're not going to earn something like this in a certificate of deposit at a bank or a savings account or really anything. Now, you don't get trades like this every day, but you get enough of them. You get quite a lot of them in earnings season. And that, on top of everything else in between, is how you pay yourself because you are looking at one thing as one focus. Otherwise, how would you ever know to do this? How would you ever know to hold this? How would you ever know what the targets were or anything to do with this? How would you ever know to do anything right with this at all if you didn't have a red circle every day where you're looking for a juniper every day, if that's in fact what you do? Now, let's talk about position sizing and leverage. The position size you take in a trade depends on the amount of money you choose to risk based on your level, which is beginner, intermediate, or advanced. You are putting your stop in the trains based on using your required monetary risk amount. Using hard stops mean you're only risking that portion of money. So your risk is not on the position sizing. It has to do with the money amount, which has to be equivalent each time. You're sizing and taking the share size and know how much share size to take based on the monetary risk, which that needs to be the same. And you need leverage and buying power to take a position. But it has nothing to do with the amount you're risking on the trade, okay? You are deciding on each and every trade you take what your monetary risk is, and it should be roughly the same each trade. So if you're in the intermediate, you're risking 150, 150, 150. And if you're advanced, you'd be risking $600 in every trade. And if you're a beginner, 60 bucks on each trade or 50 or whatever you decide. Smaller amount. The only difference between a beginner trader, intermediate trader, and advanced trader, though, is size. That's really the only difference, and, and it's experience. A trader cannot risk more money per trade and take size until they know how to accurately trade over a period of months. This is the experience part. However, trading with size is the goal. One play, though, with size can make your whole week. As you can see by the Juniper, two or three great plays a month can make your whole month. This is really the nice thing about trading gaps. Unlike scalping or anything else that you would do as a day trade, a couple of good quality moves per month make your month. And in between, you are trading and you are taking the gaps. And whether they're one hour or two hours some days, you're chunking out the rest of your month. And you've got a couple goodies in there that really make your month. Now, example here, trading with size. 200 shares of a stock that moves a dollar was 200 bucks. Like if you stayed in the Juniper for the buck move. If you'd had 2,000, it's $2,000 for the dollar. 20,000 shares, could you take 20,000 shares on something short? Even with a small account, it was cheaper. $20,000 profit. Like, you could take something that was 4 or $5 strike price. Now, the difference is only the size, which equates to what the risk amount, which equates to what your level that you're on, and how do you get to that level where you could even risk $600 in a trade is you are making money consistently. And when you're making money consistently, you can risk more. And when you're risking more, you will make more. And when you're making more, then you can possibly make enough to pay yourself for a living. And I don't know how much you need to pay your bills, but this is something that you would have to sit down and decide for yourself. Ultimately, though, the trading with size is the way to make a living trading. I mean, 
I've all, I always knew this. I just always knew this. I knew this from day one. I always traded with size from the get-go. At the beginning, it was not a good idea for me because I didn't know what I was doing at the beginning, but I always knew it and I always traded like this from day one. This is something that makes a big difference. It just does. This is how you have common days. This is how you get motivated to get up in the morning and do it the next day. And when you have days where you make $2,500, $3,000, $4,000 on a trade, there's, there's, it's, you're on a high. You're on a high the rest of the night. You get up the next morning and you're excited about trading. And this is how you do it. Trading with focus is a way to make a living trading, which for me is the checklist, which I talked about earlier. It's the reason that I'm able to stick to my plan because I have this right next to me every single day, all organized and written out. And this is my business plan. This is my structure to do it. Now, how much to risk to make a living day trading? Let's talk about this briefly. I'm, I'm just going to use an average of what people consider making a living, which is $100,000 a year. Although some people don't need this to pay their bills. Some people need more. Some people can use less. But I'm going to use an average of this. If you use this as your goal, you want to make $100,000 a year, an average risk unit of $250 per trade is suggested to, to make it. But once you're good okay, at holding the targets, using $200 risk unit could achieve this goal. You have to be very good to do that. So I think $250 is a better risk amount. You would be in that range where you're, you're above intermediate at the beginning of advance. But you don't have to risk actually $600 per trade to make two hundred to make a hundred thousand a year. You you could be fine with risking two fifty, if you're doing all the right things, rating the gaps, taking the correct entries, sizing yourself, and not scalping them, which is holding them for moves and momentum moves. Once you get up where you're risking five six hundred dollars a trade, you're making more than two hundred thousand dollars a year. So you don't if you if a hundred thousand dollars a year pays your bills, you don't have to risk you know, five, six hundred dollars to trade. Now let's look at some examples here. Let's just say you you want to make five hundred bucks a day. It equates to twenty five hundred dollars a week. Five hundred dollars a day, twenty five hundred a week is one thirty a year. This is a living. For many people, seventy eight thousand dollars a year is a living. So that's three hundred dollars a day or fifteen hundred a week. Fifteen hundred dollars a week. Fifteen hundred dollars a week. This fifteen hundred dollars a week is not a lot of money for a day trader to make. And yet Many, many people buy into the belief system that it's impossible to do, and they can't do it. And they don't do it. They don't do it because they don't believe how to do it. They don't believe they can do it. And they don't even try to do it. They'd rather just talk about how it can't be done. you got to get over that. Now, let's just say you're here, and you just one fifty a day. If you can prove to yourself you can make $39,000 a year for one year, you keep your day job, just prove to yourself you can make forty grand a year trading. I guarantee you will have so much confidence and conviction in yourself, you will have totally disassociated yourself with that belief system that it can't be done, that you will be prepared then mentally to risk more the second year of your trading then to get up to the next level and risk $300, you know, $250, $300 in your trades and get to the point where you can actually make $100,000 a year. All right? Just prove to yourself that you can consistently make money over the period of 12 months. And again, you're doing this in a short time of the day. To be able to make $39,000 a year extra income working part-time hours is, is actually really good. Because if you have your regular job plus this, is extra money that you didn't even count on. Now, to be able to make $130,000 a year working part-time is, is actually great. Or any anything even remotely over that, okay? Because it's a small-time investment every day for the amount of money that you would actually make. Now, I briefly talked about this earlier. This is something that I created. I was just talking in the room one day, and it's called the Stocks with Trader Success Wheel. This is the wheel of the pieces of the pie that you need to be successful. This is the strategy part. The strategy part in here is the gap. The gap, the 26-point rating system, this is what I teach in the class. This other very large part, not as large as the strategy that you need to be successful, and this is if you want to make it as a, as a career, is the entry. The entry, the entry, the entry, the entry is what gets you the good risk to reward. It what gets you in and profitable, even trades that don't go on to the target. Uh, this is what allows me to make money so consistently, uh, honing in on the entries. And I teach this in the class as well. And the third piece here, which is not a large as piece as the strategy of the entry, is the M for money management. In this resides also your own belief system about yourself and trading. It's all together in there because if you have a poor belief system that you can't make money doing this, even if you have this and this, you'll, you'll be in your head too much and screw it up. 
This is about having discipline, if you want to call it that. But it's really just about what you believe. If you believe that you have the power to be successful trading, you will. And if you don't believe you will, you won't. You won't. Because you will take a great trade and you will screw it up. And I've seen people do this. I don't do this, okay? I am way past this point. But at the beginning, when I first started out, you know, I struggled with this as well for myself. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I think everybody does. You have to work it out in your head. I always knew personally I was successful, but I was back and forth with my money management stuff, sometimes holding things too long or getting out too early, and you got to work it out. You find a happy medium, and once you know where the targets really are in stocks, you will see them go to the targets time and time and time and time and time and time again, just like Juniper, and you will not be surprised. And then you will come to an agreement with, between yourself, which you can live with, which is that you're never going to get out of the whole thing and hold the whole thing down to the full target and get out of the low of the day in every trade. There will be trades you do that. There are trades that I do that. They are what I call perfect trades, whole and complete, where I do everything right, and I'm capable of doing that. You will do that too if you learn my system and some of the trades. But in between, there will be trades where you do not hold the whole thing, and you trail in the rest, and you get out of half and are profitable still, or you get out too soon and it goes on to a bigger target, but you're still up for the day, okay? And the goal as a trader, as I said, is to make money. That is your number one goal, and it's to take good risk to reward trades. And part of money management means not being a scalper, not risking one risk unit and making a quarter of a half. You are in it for the game. It's not an all-day game, but you're in it to win it. You're in it to make it. You're in it to do it. You're in it for the money, and that's how you're going to pay your bills. Uh, Jim has asked me a question here. Can you trade IRA funds with your broker? I have no idea. You'll have to ask them. They'll know, though. I expect not as most will not allow someone to short with IRA funds. Again, I have no idea. Someone else asked me that too and I, I a long time ago and I told them to talk to their broker. But you know what? Somebody told me somebody told me that they did do it. Somebody told me you can't and somebody told me they did it and I said, you know what? Just call your broker because I don't, I don't really know. And I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. There are so many things that brokers have that are so strict with compliant rules. You have got to ask them and specifically with an IRA account. So you really, really have to talk to the broker if you have a situation where you're not sure if you can short. Because my system is mainly shorting. Now, can you use bullish gaps for the system and flip them? The answer is yes. I had a client that recently did the class. He asked me about that. He hasn't done any long since he did the class because he can short, but I know he's going to. Um, and I did call along last week, and I think he did it. So you can flip the points for the bullish, and you could do bullish gaps. Now, I'm, you know, I like the shorts. The reason I like the shorts is they move very fast. That's my only reason I really like the shorts, because I don't like to be in a trade for a long time. But I know people are asking me about it. I know people are doing it. And I will say that in the live trading room, if I call a long, it's really good, because I don't talk about longs that often. And if I happen to see one, and if I happen to comment on it, write it down and do it. Because the thing is that I just don't care much for longs personally and I can see them really well too. That's one of the reasons I see what the market's going to do. But I just don't like to do them personally as much as the shorts. But if I happen to pick a long, it's probably pretty, pretty amazing. Or I wouldn't feel the need to talk about it. So you could use the system for longs even if you can't shorten your broker account in your IRA. But you got to check with them. Anyways, getting back to them, this, these are the critical pieces. These are the critical pieces that you need to be successful as a trader. Whether you're a day trader, swing trader, court trader, it really doesn't matter. You need all these things for all of the above. You need all these things on any level you're at. You need all these things no matter how much money you have. It really does not matter. And people constantly, constantly want to talk about how much money they have and how much money they want to make. you got to get out of your head about the money. The money will come once you know how to do it well. It will come in droves once you know how to do it well, by the way. And so you've got to just get out of your head about it. I know it's challenging if you've been at this for a while, but take my advice. So one other thing I want to talk about, time of the day investment for the strategy. People say, well, how long does it take to do this to rate the gaps? I start the room at 8.30. Honestly, I start looking at stuff as soon as I roll out of bed. But if, as long as you give yourself 30 minutes, 45 minutes, that's enough prep time before the open. I wouldn't, I wouldn't start situating everything and rating stuff any, you know, past 9 o'clock. You want to be at your desk by 9 at the latest. 8.45 is better. 
You want to start in with me at 8.30? Good. You don't want to roll out of bed at 9.25 and start trading. Unless you're relying on me to do everything and just come into the room and you rely on me to do the whole thing. There are some people that do that because of the time zone, but I say you're going to have 30, 45 minutes in the morning to prep before the open and then about 30, 45 minutes to trade. Okay, tell you, get in the trade, wait for the trade to set up, take it, get out. That's, you know, your time investment on the day. So it's not a big time investment on the day, but I'm just giving you some idea because people always ask me about it. Uh, do you need a specific broker to get filled in the shorts? <laughs> you need a broker that has good short access. A lot do. Every once in a while you'll get one that doesn't though. You can email me, Jim, and I'll refer some brokers to you. So let's talk about job security in today's economy. What is your future career plan in your current job? Let's say you have a current job. What's your future plan for that job? To stay in it until you can retire? And then after that, what is your retirement plan? And are you getting annual raises at your position? Are you making more money year after year? And not only that, are you happy? Are you happy with your career at the amount of time and effort you put into it each day? It's time to do what I call forward thinking. It's forward thinking. We all have to do this. Everyone, everyone, we have to do forward thinking. What is forward thinking? It's planning or tending to plan for the future, forward looking. And I'm talking about in every direction. I'm talking about next month, next quarter, next year, 2015, five years out. You are forward thinking now to plan for yourself. You are planning for the future. You are planning for your future, how you want that outcome to be. So know that if you buy into this belief system that you cannot be successful as a trader, as a day trader, you are forward thinking yourself into a black hole of utter disaster and non-success. Failure, okay, basically. So you want to plan for the future for success as if you were already there, okay? Build it and they will come, whatever you know the saying is. You want to plan that you will be successful. But you do have to have a plan to create that to happen. So you have to believe it and you have to have a plan of action to create that to happen. Because self-reliance matters in today's world. This idea of thinking, well, I'll deal with it later. Well, I'll, you know, this, that, the other thing. All kinds of stuff can come up and can happen that you did not anticipate. But if you are self-reliant and you have a plan of action, you'll be far, far better off than the guy next to you. Now, I also get to ask this question, how long does it take to learn the system? It depends exactly where you're at right now with your own trading. If you're brand, brand new, sometimes it's the best thing because you don't have any negative things in your head, but you're going to have to learn how to read charts and all that basic stuff from me. If you've been trading for a while, know the basics of chart application and how to press the buttons, but are totally screwed up in your head with a strategy and don't know what you're doing with gaps, or don't have a strategy at all, you're going to have to learn that from me. So it's hard for me to say how long it's going to take to learn the system. I find that some people learn it like that. Okay, they just learn it right like that. Like the one person wasn't able to be in the room today. He emailed me. I bet I know what your top picks were. He was right. He had them exact and he wasn't even there. He just did the class. Okay, that guy's going to make it. So there are some people that just take everything that I teach them and suck it up like a sieve and they just run out and start making money right away so they can do it. Then there's some people that I need to work with and I'm willing to work with people. I believe that everybody has a chance to make it, but I believe that you have to take responsibility for yourself and thinking about some of the things I talked about today, which is that you got to believe that you can. You have to believe that you can, okay? It's part of it. The power of the gap is what creates the huge opportunity in a very short time frame for these trades to work. And you've got to learn the right knowledge to make money trading so you can trade for a living if this is what you want to do. It's ultimately that you're learning how to day trade like a professional, like as if you were getting up and getting dressed every day, going down to Wall Street, pretend that's you. You would take it that seriously. You would study and take it that seriously in everything that you would do. And you would be that serious every single morning when you trade. And remember that you can do it. It is possible. It has a lot to do with your attitude. So empower yourself today. If you want to learn, I teach a class. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It's a complete system to use to trade. It teaches you the 26-point rating system, the entries, the exits, the targets. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Again, you can flip the points for the bullish. Jim was asking about that. Retakes are free. The first time you register, you can retake it anytime in the future for free. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Class is this weekend, October 25th and 26th, Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. 
cost of the class is $29.99. You can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com if you would like to sign up and register. I will say that having a mentor really helps, which, which I am, because you can email me and ask me questions, and I actually you know, do want people to make it. I know that you can, and I generally take an interest in the people that are my students. Now, I also teach another class called the Trends Course. This is the 28th and 29th. This is more about longer-term trends in stock charts, if you're a swing trader or a trader. Cost of this class is $9.99. This is the 28th and 29th from 12 to 4. And again, if you're interested in this, you can email me. I'm running a special for October if you want to do both classes. Some people already signed up for this. It's $34.99 for both classes. The Long-Term Trends class and then the Golden Gap class, which teaches you how to day trade. You learn everything in the Gap class to, to day trade. If that's what you're interested in doing, that's all that you need. Uh, you will save $500, though, if you want to do both. And you can email me there. Kathy can put my information in the room if you're interested in signing up. And remember, fall is a busy time to trade where there's lots of gaps. There's going to be tons of stuff this week. There's tons of stuff tonight. I didn't look at anything tonight. Someone tell me really quick what CMG is doing. I just wonder if it's gapping up or not or gapping down or what it's doing. Does anyone have any questions really quickly? And one more thing. I'm doing a question and answer session tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m. If you're interested, if you have more questions, since we run out of time here, at 11 o'clock tomorrow, I'm doing a question and answer session where you can just come and ask me whatever questions you want about gaps with the class, okay, or trades. It's from 11 to noon tomorrow in my live trading room. The password is swoosh. If you don't know how to access my live trading room with that password, email me. I will send you the link. There is a video on YouTube where I talk about this. It is October 21st, which is tomorrow and Tuesday. For people who have been following me for a while and have questions, or if you're brand, brand new here tonight and have questions, it's going to be an open forum, questions and answers tomorrow. For one hour, I'm going to give my time after I'm done trading for anybody that would like more information. Actually, Perry, they're going to cut me off here at All in Trader Central. Email me that question, and I'll write you back. <laughs> I don't want to upset Kevin tonight. All right, thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming. Have a good night. Email me with questions. Sorry. Email me if you need anything else. Thanks.